Hey, it's everyone's favorite book, Witness of Audio Romance, Chapter 28, Lock of the Irish. Cassian places the compass back on the bed. Both of you know it's too late to run if he didn't defuse the bomb correctly. Ten seconds? Maybe less, Nami. I love you. Cassian, I love you too. More than I ever thought possible. Cassian reaches over to you and gently takes your hand, squeezing it. You lean your forehead against his, shutting your eyes and taking in his comforting presence for what might be the last time. The seconds tick down and it feels like time itself is frozen. For you realize there was no explosion. You look down at the compass to find the hands have stopped moving. Oh my god, you did it. Mm. We aren't dead. How did you know how to do that? You are a superhero. Must be some of the Irish luck. Throw your arms around him and he holds you like he never wants to let go. And your sledding screech causes you to spring apart. Aisling lunges into the room, stretching your arms out to wrap around Cassian's throat. Why won't you die? I've been asking the same thing for this book. Before you can lay a hand on him, you move to intercept her. Nobody touches my man like that. <sighs> Pin her arms behind her back. Grabbing Aislinn's tiny forearms, you yank her forward, locking her wrists firmly in place. Let me go! I wish I could. I'll struggle all you want. You're not going anywhere. You ruin everything! I hate you! The feeling is mutual. Nah, I like her. Mm, wish she would have won. Aisling moves to, or Cassian moves to Aisling and takes over, restraining her. Then I guess you won't be sad when we don't visit you in jail. Nami is called Tomas and telling me of a special guest on his flight home. Her divans and unmarked martial cars are lined up outside the inn as Tomas takes Aisling into custody. She throws you one last withering gaze over her shoulder as she's led away. I miss you! Tomas slams the car door shut, shaking his head slightly as he makes his way over to where you and Cassian are watching everything unfold. I'm glad you're both alright. This could have turned out very, very bad. Like this book. Luckily, Cassian's nimble fingers also have a professional use. By the way, how did you get here so fast, Tomas? We were already tracking Aisling, but lost her just outside the city. I should have known she'd be coming for you, and after this, she's looking at multiple counts of attempted murder and conspiracy to murder not just a mention, intimidating witness, and assaulting a U.S. Marshal. Aisling O'Connell won't be seeing the outside of a cell for a very long time. Good riddance. But now you can seriously enjoy the rest of your vacation. I'll take your statements once you're back stateside. We got it from there. You say goodbye to Tomas and watch as Aisling is driven away. Let I sigh of relief. I feel like I could, uh, I need a two hour nap just to regulate my heart rate again. Let's see if our room is safe to return to. I wish it wouldn't. Boom. I mean, you all look at the clear. Then no more surprises await you in your room, feeling the sudden urge to flop face down on the bed. A flash of gold catches your eye and you notice the gutted compass has been left behind. Completely safe now that the bomb mechanism has been removed. Wow. Were we here when they planted this? Oh my god. Was Finn just standing over us watching us sleep? Christ, I don't know. He could have just killed me then. I don't know if I'll ever be able to sleep again. I look over to Cassian to see his jaws tied, his mouth set in a scowl as he looks down at the compass. Cassian looks so upset. He was so calm, diffusing and dealing with Aisling, but now... We need to put this ordeal behind us. I never, ever want to see this compass again, and clearly Cassian doesn't either. Ah, uh, let me guess. Pitch it. We're just gonna pitch it, maybe in the fireplace. Maybe there'll be some residue C4 on it. Boom! You pick up the canvas and... Flower at it. God, I wish this book would just die. Is it over yet? 
And with swift movement, you throw the compass on the floor as hard as you can. Nami! I'm gonna break this stupid thing into a million pieces. Brought down to pick up the cracked compass and slam it down against the ground a few more times. Have you ever slammed a compass against the ground? Take that, Finn. Take that, O'Connells. Cassian watches you in shock for a few moments before joining you on the floor. He gently takes the compass from you and you think he's going to tell you to calm down. But with a smile, Cassian takes a few turns smashing the compass against the hard wood. Glass shattering and gears springing out. Where the hell was the explosive then? You don't scare us anymore. The compass lies in ruins from your combined efforts, and as you look up to meet Cassian's gaze, you both start to laugh. Maybe I overacted just a bit. Maybe. It was really fun overreaction. You start to laugh harder, collapsing against each other. Your lips find his easily, and you feel him smile against the kiss. His ta hands tangle in your hair, and you grip your shirt with one hand. The other goes to the floor to steady yourself, your fingers touching broken glass. Oops. We should probably get this cleaned up before we get too distracted. Good call. And Cassie and carefully pick up all the pieces of the broken and destroyed compass. Still giggling to yourselves every few minutes. You dump all the pieces into the trash and stand up. I feel better now, don't you? Much better. I guess we really needed to let off some steam. Yeah, that compass. <laughs> I can't with this book. It's so stupid. Cassian pulls you in for a hug and you breathe in his familiar smell. This warm embrace instantly relaxes you and an overwhelming feeling of happiness hits you like a ton of bricks. No, that would be the, the vehicle that's coming through the wall! This, this is what I want for the rest of my life. To feel this happy, but more importantly, to feel this happy with Cassian. Maybe I was thinking about him proposing all wrong. Maybe it's not the end, but a new beginning. Cassian... Why does she talk to us? As if this is like Deadpool talking in like fourth dimensional crap. <sighs> Cassian, we've overcome so much together. I mean, it was a lot to overcome, but we did it together. I wouldn't have gotten to know you if I didn't witness the murder. And I wouldn't have fallen even more in love with you if we didn't just spend our vacation running for our lives. I feel the same way. As bad as it was, it really happened for a reason. Exactly. We wouldn't have gotten through this without the other. Making up your mind, you'll look at Cassian with a smile. So, if you wanted to go back to the Cliffs of Moher, I have an answer for you. Really? You're sure? Positive. We leave first thing tomorrow morning at dawn. Did you just... Offer to wake up early. Bring me coffee and I'll do anything for him. Yes, I did. You must really love me. Oh, you're damn right I do. He sounds Cassian's laugh with a kiss. Pull him to, to you, then on to the bed. Next morning, you and Cassian rise before the sun. But you've never been more awake. You root through your suitcase for the perfect outfit. Hmm. It's a bit confusing. It's like an outfit that just was thrown against a wall and hope it would stick. Okay. You twirl in the skirt, showing off the outfit for Cassian. Wow, Nami, you look absolutely beautiful. You give Cassian a quick kiss before twirling away again. Why, like, why do we have a giant scarf around her neck yet the outfit, like... Leaves our shoulders and neck and upper chest bare. I'm just so confused by this outfit. Feels good to finally be back to my nice, clean clothes. Are you sure you want to go to the cliffs right now? I wouldn't mind seeing that outfit off of you as well. Aren't you afraid I might change my mind? Good point. Let's go to the cliffs immediately. If she can't change her mind five minutes after the cliffs. Cassian holds the door open for you as you leave the inn, heading for the coast. Women do it all the time. It's called cold feet. There's literally a reason why it's called cold feet. Once again, you find yourself on the cliffs of Moher with Cassian, your hair billowing in the ocean breeze. I wasn't sure if you'd want to come back here after everything that's happened. 
If we let near-death experiences stop us from going places, we would never go anywhere. Doubt lifts from his features as he lets out a hearty laugh. I suppose you're right. We can't shut ourselves away. Picking both of Cassian's hands in yours, you stare deep into his caring eyes. Cassian, I'm ready now for you to ask me again. It took time to get here, but... I never thought about marriage before you. Even considering getting married was a big step for me. But you make me want that for the first time in my life. I'm so happy you feel that way. Is this the part where you get down on one knee? No, this is the part where I eat you off this cliff. Bye! No! Chuckling. <laughs> oh, God. Could that be the way this book ends? Please, just eat her off the cliff. Cassian positions himself before you, his gaze never leaving yours. You're the most driven, determined, and gorgeous woman I've ever met. Seriously, I'm gonna start writing a sitcom. An excellent start. I need Lycan. He squeezes your hand tenderly and asks, You go after what you want and inspire me to do the same. Your passion for everything you do astounds me. I know you broke your own rules by opening your heart to me, and I want to spend the rest of my life proving you were right to do so. Oh, Cassian, I will always be happy. I did, no matter what. Cassian pulls the box out of his pocket this time. You find yourself filled with joy instead of dread. You know, it'd be really great if she lined this thing with explosives. Will you boom? Admire how it sparkles. Nami, will you ma- Yes, now kiss me. I think I've got to put the ring on you first. It's nearly impossible to wait until Cassian has slipped the ring onto your finger before throwing your arms around him. Your mouth is on his, his hands are tangled in your hair, and his breath is hot as his words brush your lips. I love you so much. I love you too. Straightening his legs, Cassian kisses you deeply, pulling you both to your feet to hold you even closer so your chest is pressed to his. You clutch to the nape of his neck with one hand while the other grips his jacket collar. I can't believe we're engaged. That means I get to call you my fiancé now. Mm, I'll allow it. It makes me sound important. I feel like you're my French lover when you say it. Well, I am your lover, just a bit more Irish. You know how to French kiss, though, fiancé. It sounds even better coming out of your mouth. Mm, most things do. Now kiss me again. Anything you say, my beautiful fiancé. He obeys your command, sweeping your hair out of your face as he blends a searing kiss on your lips. Lifting you off your feet, Cassian twirls you around, never once parting your mouth from his. Then he eats you off the cliff. <laughs> the fabric of your clothes billows in the wind, blowing around you around both of you in a swirling cloud. Waves crash on the rocks below with a force paralleled only in the ferocity of your, your tongue against his. I've never been happier than I am in this moment. Felt like a challenge. I've got no problem being proven wrong if you wanted to give it a go. Placing your hands on either side of his face, you give him a slow, long kiss laced with emotion. You press every ounce of love you have for him into it, telling him exactly how you feel without saying a word. How was that? I, I feel like this could use better music, but I don't know. There's only one thing that would make it better. Better music. If I told my fiancé how crazy I am about him... You read my mind. Now let me do the same for you, fiancé. Lowering you to the ground, Cassian mirrors you, covering your cheeks with his palms. His touch is soft and delicate, conveying how deeply he cares for you in a raw, exposed way. There's somewhere I want to take you to celebrate. Okay, but later we buy a bottle of champagne to enjoy indoors. Deal, but don't worry. You'll like this. Yeet! Ravening arm around your waist, Cassian leads you along the edge of the cliffs. 
This area has been abandoned for years. Loads of privacy. So we can mount Chikawawa on a cliff's edge? Yes! What I've always wanted to do. Sarcasm. I like where this is going so far. As you get closer, a large structure comes into view perched high above the ocean. Ah, uh, welcome to my castle. It's only been used about 27 times by other books. The castle seems hardly your style, Cassian Keen. It is if I need a place to treat you like a queen. Mm, excellent point. Hmm, today is about to get even more memorable. You may want to limber up before we get started. Good thing I did some stretching this morning. You're taking the salty smell of the water, the warmth of the sunlight on your skin, and the sound of the waves lapping at the rocks below. I know it was a long road to get here, but this moment here with you is one I will never forget. He stops walking for a moment to draw you against him, his eyes dancing. I would have waited forever for your love. I'd follow you to the ends of the earth. He kisses you hungrily, and you feel a burning need to be touched, and touch him in return. Cassian. Should we go inside the ruins? Wow, look how quick that music just shifts. Celebrate your engagement in the steamy final hookup. Oh god, finally, it's over, finally. I feel like I'm Rita Repulsa coming out in the moon base going, finally after 10,000 years I'm free. It's time to finally end this book. If we don't go, I may jump your bones right here. I never understood that phrase. The feeling is mutual. I'm gonna jump your bones? I never understood it. After waiting for Cassian to set something up inside, you enter the castle ruins to find a roaring fire devouring the chill in the air. Of course you needed to create some mood lighting. Deny it all you want, but I know you love what a hopeless romantic I am. You are fairly hopeless. And you wouldn't have said yes to my proposal. Hmm, maybe I like it. If you were smooth all the time, I would grow uh, tired of it. I can't believe my ears. Now me Russo admitting she likes things a bit messy. Only in a certain context. Let me show you what I mean. Pull Cassian to you by his collar, tugging his lips down to be yours. His breathing is jagged as he gathers the fabric of your top in his hands. These clothes, we don't need them. Hmm, so take them off. And here we spent diamonds on them. They're pointless, I'm serious. He works quickly, tugging your outfit off and tossing it onto the fallen stone structure. You strip his outer layers and then slide his snug pants off over his firm ass, pausing to admire his sculpted form. Quickly, at Pixelberry, you said ass. We need to see it. Turn it around, 360, come on. Now, this is the best view in Ireland. Get, get it trending, okay? Hashtag, show us the back of characters. Come on, you can get it started. I've got to disagree with you there. I'm looking at one far superior. Now it's towards your naked body, bathed in streams of light reflected in through the stained glass windows. Each part of you is illuminated in different color depending on the composition of the glass above. Why don't we play a game? Yeah, let's play a game. Scientific exploration of the composition of the glass. Tell me what you've got in mind. <clears throat> to eat each other off the cliff. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I should be focused, but I just really am not. I hate this book so much. Mm -hmm. I will pick a color, and you have to kiss me everywhere you see it on my body. This might be the greatest game ever invented. Which color is first? Violet across my lips. Hmm, make sure you don't miss a single spot the color touches. I'll be extra vigilant. Cassie leans down, brushing his lips against the skin of your cheek, warm with the purple glow. It follows the angular shape it casts on you, outlining the slope of your jaw and the 
dip of your mouth. Mm, that feels nice. Name the next color. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but that would mean I would have to kiss your ass and get to it. Green. His eyes sparkle as they trail down the emerald line. Green line curved around your lower abdomen. You suck in a ragged breath as his lips replace his gaze, pulling your hip bone down to the V of your legs. Oh, I'm out of green. Aligning your body, you allow the emerald light to shift further down. Now you're plenty brilliant. As his mouth finds the heat waiting for him, you shift backwards, gripping the vines, blanketing the walls of the castle. A moan escapes you as his tongue coats you, slipping forward before he teasingly slides away. Now we try this with the vines. Hmm, there's them around me. I want to be tangled up with you. Careful, love, or you'll sound like a romantic. I'll let it slide this time. Smiles tugging in the vines until he's gathered enough to slip beneath your arms. Looping the green leaves around your soft skin, he moves down and across your stomach, winding up your wrist to the other side. Plot twist, it's poison ivy. Widen your stance. There's a mischievous glint in his eyes as you open your legs further, planting your feet on either side of it. His fingertips cause tremors to course through you as he tangles the vines from your ankles to the tops of your thighs. Now, what will you do with me? Devour you. With that, he lunges, covering you with his mouth as he sucks at the most sensitive parts of you. You moan, clutching the vines, holding you in place for support as he glides his tongue back and forth. Oh god. As he gathers you between his lips, pulling gently in a slow but powerful rhythm. The leaves are like silk against your skin, cradling you as your toes curl off the ground in pleasure. Now may come for me. You have the vines yanking a few out of the wall from the force of your ecstasy. When you're stilled, Cassian untangles you, pressing you tightly against him as his lips meet yours. The kiss is fiery and fierce, fueled by the intense desire to consume, to give in to the most basic of human instincts. I want you, Cassian. Make me forget everything else. I won't stop until I do. Angle your mouth for deeper contact, exploring the thick, hot surface of his tongue with your own. Need throbs between you, and you feel the formation of words as he murmurs, but the meaning is unclear. I didn't quite catch that. I called you Mogura. It means my love in Irish. But if you don't like it, I could call you something else tonight. Unless you want me to call you that. This is such a weird phrase to be called. Bagheera! All I'm thinking is Jungle Book right now. Bagheera. Mm, call me Bagheera. Yes. No. Guiding Cassian by the waist, you lay him down to the blanket of hail bay in front of the fire. Lowering yourself down, you straddle him, squeezing his hips between your legs. I can really call you mine now that we're engaged. I've been yours since the moment I met you. Grinning, you reach down to guide Cassian where you want him. Once he's there, you plant your feet on the stones warm by the fire, using the ground to press harder as you move up and down. You rotate your hips slow and steady, building speed with the friction, growing friction of your naked bodies. Groaning, Cassian laces his free hand with yours, his voice thick with passion. Show me where else you want me to touch ya. Mm, touch my ass. You gave your hand in his as you cover your backside with his palm. Fingers knitted together. Keeping your grip locked, he massages your ass, squeezing each cheek and twirling his thumb. With steady motions in the valley between them. He rises between your bodies, wet yearning, driving you into one another's arms with unyielding power. The firm fullness of Cassian rubs against you, tipping you towards a cliff that feels as real as the one outside. Christ, you're incredible, Magira. You quake on the precipice, building the presence or pressure up inside until you cast and tug you even deeper down and you can't help but release him. You celebrated your engagement with Cassian. 
For a moment it feels like you can't move, but then it starts again, feeling you with a quivering sensation that grips the life of you. Cassian's lips are on you, his hands roaming every curve, his skin pressed to yours, but still you want more of him. Just... Mm, not even gonna say. In the moment, hidden in an Irish castle above the ocean, you know you'll never grow tired of the man in your arms. All, all the fears you had about the marriage drift out to sea, carried away with the waves. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Jesus, if you exist. <laughs> Thank you for playing fucking this piece of shit. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-mm. You notice how Pixelberry didn't even sign it at the end. They're just like, thanks for playing. Like, if any of you people actually spent money on this book, thanks for playing, you gullible pricks. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Think about this. 28 chapters of this garbage. God, sweet Jesus, the only reason I cover this crap is because it entertains you people. Like, if you literally came to me and said, Locum, don't do this. If every single one of you said, nah, don't do this, don't do this. We won't watch anyone else's, and especially, like, we just don't do this to yourself. I'll be like, okay, let's actually cover content that actually matters. I want you to think about this for a moment. I have a Steam catalog, a catalog of games. 290 games. That I haven't shared with people. That I want to share with people. That I want to stream more. That I want to do more. And I'm instead spending 26 plus minutes of my time covering this garbage. Like this is this is literally the worst book. Congratulations, Pixelberry. I have never stated which book was the worst to me. This is the worst. This is the worst book I have read. Out of chapters, what's your story? Like, every single app. This is literally and figuratively the worst book I've read in my entire life. Like, oh my god. I can finally be done with this crap. My Mondays can actually go back to doing decent content. Or at least something other than this shit. Like, maybe even working out. Taking the half an hour to an hour I would have covered on this shit and doing something productive with my life. Oh, boy. Anyway, now that my rant's over, you know what to do. It's on the screen. Catch you all later. Hope you had fun. Bye.